Hey, you guys, I'm back. <sighs> so, I had a phone call come in on this phone. And normally, <laughs> normally I'm trying to be on my laptop using my Restream IO. And then someone calls me and it shuts off everything. So, thank you for your patience, you guys. I'm telling you, stuff just happened. I've had the most technological difficulties today. Excuse me. <laughs> Blessings to you. Thank you, Prophet Mitch. I'm trying to pull my stuff up now. So I had my little notes up over here. And I want <laughs> thank you guys. And as you're coming in, definitely share, invite. But as I was saying before, for those of you, definitely go catch the first part of that. Your heart has to settle that issue. We cannot, you know, as a woman, you know, over well over 40, you know, I've had plenty of life lessons and experience in this area, and it's part of my platform. And I've learned the hard way that you can't go into situations with in love hunger. You can't go into situations in a state of poverty in your heart when it comes to love. And if you're in any place thirsty and hungry for affection, for attention, for affection, for validation to be seen and to be approved before you get into a romantic situation, you're going to supersede every red flag. And I'm not talking about sexual. What I'm talking about is of the soul, mental and emotional. There's a foundational level of love and acceptance that you have to have in your heart of hearts between you and Father God. There's a foundational le a level that says, God, I know you delight in me. God, I know you see me. God, I know that I'm deeply accepted. I know that my stuff is taken care of on the cross. I don't have to strive to be seen. I don't have to strive to be loved. We cannot go into these situations in a state of love hunger, in a state of love poverty, where we're hungry and thirsty right and so this has to be tangible felt and known say tangible felt and known I can't we can't afford to be 45 and 50 years old and I'm going 20 and 30 years and I still feel unloved and unworthy and unseen I'm still wanting that affection very strong I'm still wanting that attention very strong and that's healthy it's normal but when it's a a big gap of it, when you have a deficit of it, when you've been going 20 and 30 years feeling like nobody sees you, you're going 20 and 30 years feeling like you don't have enough attention, 20 and 30 years not getting that affection, it has to be tangible, felt, seen, and known by God between you and God, right? And so I, I, you want to go into the situations where, God, my heart is full, my heart is content, I am satisfied. And that relationship is going to be icing on my cake. Amen. And so this is a real place. Not only do we have to get to that place, come on, but we have to maintain it, right? This is where I've messed up. Hear me well. And those of you, and I haven't introduced myself because I got cut off on the first one, but my name is Tanika Maria. I'm a certified Christian life coach. I'm all about helping you get real, be healed, and move forward in emotional wholeness, peace, and clarity. But most of all, I'm a child and a woman of God. And I've learned this stuff through painful experience. And I'm to the point in my life, well, God, I don't want to keep learning through painful, jacked up experience. I want to learn through love and obedience. Amen. How about you? Put a one in the chat. If you want to start learning your experiences through love, through the love of God, knowing that God loves me and through obeying him instead of keep going the same patterns, the same cycles. I don't want to keep learning. God, I paid my suffering dues. Hello. I have paid my suffering dues. So without that foundation of where my heart is full, my heart is satiated, my heart is content. I'm not scratching and screeching and putting pictures up on Instagram and Facebook and sneaking and stalking and trying to get affection, trying to get attention, trying to be validated, seen in a proved that my heart is already full. I'm not coming into it from a place of love poverty and love hungry or thirstiness. And I'm not talking about sex, but my heart is already full. And when we are in that deficit, you will supersede red flags. And see, I know what I'm talking about. What I have learned in my own experience, I started off, I would start off at that place I would start off that place. Okay, God, I'm learning to be rooted, grounded in your love. God, I look to you. God, I sit in the high place of your affection. I'm seated secure emotionally in the love of God. You know, I look to you, Lord, and I'm just sitting in that place. But I'll get burnt out. 
I'll get overwhelmed. Something will happen and now I'm hurting. So I have these three. These are the, these are the tricks of the enemy. He's going to burn you out, overwhelm you and create circumstances. And, and God allows it. You know, it's life, right? And then I find that my heart love tank starts to diminish, right? And so I'm burnt out. I'm hurting. I'm overwhelmed. I'm in major tra transition. And guess what? Now I'm looking for attention. Now I'm feeling that I want, you know, I, I want something else. I, I, come on. This is a real place. And then you find yourself in a place where your heart is not content. And I and see, when, when you're in that place where your heart is hungry, in that place where your heart is thirsty for that affection and for that attention, you're going to overlook stuff. You're going to overlook stuff. And the older you get, the costlier it is. The older you get, the costlier it is. Hey there, Chatney. Thank you for staying on Prophet Mitchell. God bless it. blessings to you all. Yes, lady, you're close enough because I hadn't even gotten to my red flags yet. I'm getting ready to get into stuff, but this is an excellent chance for you to invite your followers if any of this is resonating with you. Without this heart hunger being satisfied, and I'm looking over here at this laptop on my notes. Without this heart hunger being satisfied, the following can and most likely will occur and become more profound and deep-seated as we age. So if you don't take care, thank you, Prophet Mitchell. Mitchell blessings to you, woman speaking life. If you don't deal with this heart hunger issue, where the, the need for affection and attention from the opposite sex is, is so strong and so like wild, then the older you get, the more deep-seated things occur and this is what's going to happen. Number one, like I said earlier, red flags will be glossed over because initially you're going to feel like you're getting your love, hunger, needs met. And see, the older you get, especially if you've done any level of healing work, if you've learned some lesson, then the people that show up in your life, the counterfeits and the ones that are almost the one, they're not going to be quite as dis disastrous or destructive as your previous um, relationships. So as you continue to elevate, as you ascend, as you heal, the, the, the counterfeits, it's going to take a lot more discernment. And if your love tank is really low, or if you allow your love tank in terms of being satisfied with God's affection and acceptance of you, then it's going to be very hard because with the counterfeits, the red flags, are they're still profound, but they're more subtle. And the older you get, sometimes it, you know, it can be very hard to distinguish, especially if you've let your heart hunger get too far gone, right? Aging causes us to become more set in our ways. A 40 plus 45 year old potential make will not likely change, right? Unless they're again, very intentional to do the work. And I'm talking about therapy, counseling, coaching, reading books, journaling, prayer, inner healing, and deliverance work. 99.9% .9 of people, once we get past 40, once we start pushing past 45, and I'm in the pushing past 45, pushing, like way out there, y'all. <laughs> but most of us at this age, we're, we're too scared, too lazy, too busy, and too overwhelmed to do the work. We don't want to see ourselves, right? And because we still want a relationship, but we don't want to go to no counselor. We don't want to pay no coach. We, don't, we just want God to put, we're going to get anointing oil upside our head, fall out, and think that's going to do it. And it can, but you need to renew that mind and heal up those emotions. So what you see is what you're going to get. So the old, the more you age, the more deep seated this stuff is. And as you continue to age and date, the red flags become more costly and more dam damaging. But because your heart hunger is so big, because you haven't had affection in 20 years, because you haven't really felt seen and accepted and approved and validated on the inside in a deep way in a long, long time, you'll gloss over all of that. And the reality is that when you get past 40, you really, really don't have time to waste. When God is sending, like you got red flags just flapping all up in your face. But my heart's so hungry. But I need the affection. I need the attention. But if you see red flags just wagging in the area of loyal character, genuine personal relationship with God, like a real true relationship, truly saved, the capacity to give and receive love, this is so important. Uh, this is so important. That person got to be able to love you fully and love you back. They got to love you authentically. 
They got to really like love you. And I really saw this with my sister. You guys know I haven't been on Periscope last week because we had to bury my brother-in-law. And I watched my sister be with him to his last breath. I watched how, and, and, and then I saw when we went to the wake, I saw how people were coming up, shaking her hand. He loved you. We all knew all about you. You were, he wrote, the sun rose and set. And she talked about all the small little, simple little stuff he did for her. And all the little extra little, mere little cute things he did. And how he just loved her. And they would love off the simplest little goofy stuff. And it was so special. Special. That's the kind of love you want, right? But if you your heart is so hungry, you you'll take anything. You'll take anything. And so these red flags, the capacity to give and receive love, a person can have a head knowledge of the love of God, but it has not sunk down to their heart yet. Come on, and that'll show up in their relationship with you. If that red, red, red flags and purpose, red flags and being stable, I'm talking about financially and all of that stuff. If, if your heart is so hungry for attention, if your heart is so hungry for affection, and, and again, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about just the natural desire for attention and affection. There has to be a foundation of that between you and the Holy Spirit. There has to be a foundation of that with you and Father God before you engage. And the older you get, and the longer you go, you go 25 years, 15, 20 years and never feel like no one really sees you and gives you affection and pays you attention. Them red flags, you'll overlook that. You will overlook that. And see, this is the thing that we do as when we are a good and godly Christian. And this is what I've done. This is the mistake that I have made. It's so hard. It is so hard. And as you're coming, if this is blessing you, definitely share this out. Um, and follow me if you're not following. But if you're a good and godly Christian, it's really, really hard to say no and not give somebody a chance. If you run across and, and the older you get, you got, get higher quality people that are not as disastrous and dangerous. They can be consistent in all areas except one. And because you're good and because you want to give them a chance and because you want to give the benefit of the doubt, they may be good in all areas and have one big old red flag. But because your heart is hungry, because they're giving you that attention, because they own, everything else is good. You know, they love the Lord, they save, they got a job and this and that and the other. But there's this one big old just, just a slapping in this wind, right? You'll try to pray them through. You'll, you'll try to give it some more time. And because you care and because, you know, you love them and, you know, and they're meeting that need for affection. And I'm trying to turn my little notes here. Excuse me, you guys. Why is this thing doing that? Um, they will meet every need and you'll wind up being stuck in that situation. It's hard to, if you got five areas and that person is a red flag in one and they're in alignment with everything else. No matter what, the older you get, even that is so critical and so crucial. That one big red flag and everything else can be on point. And you can gloss over that and you can go along and get along and you can try to pray them through. And see, we'll pray for God to reveal his will and God will show you that red flag. And, we will, and he will clip, make it very clear, but we'll try to work with him. And see, the reality is, and again, this is for those over 40, they probably will not change. They will have to do a lot of, lot of work. Because see, at this point, at our age, most of our issues are probably deep-seated by now. You're talking about 25 years of ingrained behavior. You're talking about 25, 30 years of an unhealed childhood wound that's causing the manifestation that you're seeing in the relationship. You're talking 25 years or 10 or 15 years of parts of the person that has not been healed from their previous relationship. You're talking about this one red flag may be the result of something that's just been going on in them forever and they haven't fully dealt with it and they don't even see it themselves fully. And you and and the problem is now you're too old. We're too old for that, right? Now it becomes a choice. Like, do I want to settle and suffer with this or do I want to breathe, believe and pray them through? Is this really God's best for you? Those are some significant choices that you'll be making 
when when you're dating over 40, am I willing to, am I going to settle? And I, I see this one flag. Everything else is great, but this one flag is painful. And I'm 45 years old and we're compatible and got this in every other area. But this one flag is like really significant and it hurts and I see it. If you haven't settled that hunger in your soul, if you're not rooted, grounded, fixed and founded in the love of God, if you've let your heart get so empty in your capacity in terms of you're just thirsty and hungry for that, you'll let that one red flag slip by. You'll, you'll, you'll try to work it through and pray it through. And I'm here to tell you, at our age, at our age, it's difficult. It is difficult. You have to make some decisions. And these are just some of the lessons. These are just some 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 insights. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you, Chatney. I hear you, Chatney. You know, I've learned these things in real time in my own experience um, recently. But I just want to encourage you, encourage you to get before God and satisfy work with him to establish a baseline foundational level of being content in your heart. And I don't claim to have this down. I'm growing and healing in it myself. It's a daily process. It's a daily process. And see, God, you know, it's a lot of people out here doing the, you know, quick, quick, quick. It's not a quick fix. A relationship with God is not something that's going to be quick. We learn best. God moves in rest and he moves in peace. And he He cares more about trans, transformational relational growing. In other words, God transforms us and changes us and heals us in relationship with him. He's not a do it and let's get it done so you can accomplish some big purpose for the kingdom. He cares about just you and being with you and, and, and enjoying you and having that relationship with you. That's where God is. And it's like within the flow of that relationship, then your heart receives that affection from him. Then you feel the love of God. Then you feel the acceptance of him. And he, he like accepts you and covers you as you grow, as you make mistakes, as you transition through your life situations. And he cultivates and he develops that. And he delights in you and he's affectionate with you and he, he shows himself to you. That's where God is, right? And as you cultivate and deepen in that, then the discernment, the intuition to be able to, and the strength. And the courage to say no to red flags, to say no, especially when you're past 40 and 45 and pushing 50. Your time, your heart is too valuable. Let's take that time and come with me in the journey as I'm right here with you to really be rooted, grounded, fixed and founded in the love of God. So that when you go into relational situations, you're not coming from a hungry, thirsty, like I'm so starving for attention. I'm so starving to be seen. I'm so starving for a hug. And I'm not even, I'm not talking about sex. I'm just talking about that basic need for attention and affection. It's a healthy need, but it can be very excessive and it can be it, it, it can get to be a dysfunctional, especially when it's you're going without this for years and years and years. Then the first person that shows up, you know, you all red flags just go out the window. And so I'm just here to share those nuggets with you on tonight. And I also want to invite you, if what I'm saying is resonating with you and you've been through a lot in 2020, I know I have. I know 2020 has been a rough year. It's definitely been a rough year for me. And I want to release the residue of this year. I, I want to go into 2021 20, without the regrets and without the residue. How many of you want to just shake this year off? I, God, I want beauty for these ashes. God, I want beauty for these ashes. Mm, yes, that's right, Carolyn. Yes. Blessings to you, the big five O. Oh. Yes, I hear you. But if you've been in 2020 and it's been a rough year and, and God, there's regrets and there's a residue and there's like some ashes 
It's like, God, give me beauty for these ashes. Release me from the regret. Release me from the residue of this year. God, I, I want to walk in 2021, come hella high water with serenity and stability and peace. And there are things coming down the pipeline. Yes, happy birthday to her. There are things coming down the pipeline in 2021. We're so glad that 2020 is going to be over, but I believe that 2021 won't be a piece of cake either. And we got to be strong. We got to know our God. We got to know that we know that we know that we're loved. And so I invite you to come along with me. I'm having a year in masterclass on Zoom. It will not be on Periscope. And the investment is whatever you want to sow. Let me go ahead and put it out there because people start dropping off when they hear something about a class. And so I didn't set a price for this. I'm going to pour out. I'm going to pour out and teach and give as much as I can. And it's going to be live Q&A, mentoring, and we're going to coach and I'm going to teach and it's going to be training. And the link is in my Periscope bio where you can click and be a part of this. It's December 17th which is a Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And I call it the Serene and Stable Masterclass, but I'm just going to be, it's just going to be a class where we can get together and, you know, we're going to talk and we're going to share and I'm going to share tools and strategies on, you know, let's, let's get rid of some of this mess from 2020. Lord, fill my heart with your love. Lord, let me position my heart in front of your love and your goodness this year. Let me position my heart, God, to receive your goodness. Let me position my heart, God. And for my heart to be in position, I got to let go of some mess. For my heart to be in position, I got to release the regret. For my heart to be in position for 2021, God, God, you got to create in me a clean heart. I got to forgive them. They didn't know. They was jacked up and wounded too, just just like me and I hurt people that I didn't know and now they hurt me and it's just a circle God help me to release what they did mm. so this class is for you and again I'm not putting a price on it you sold what you're led to sell and this is on December 17th 7 o'clock p.m. on zoom so it's private I'll share more of my testimony I'll share things in zoom that I won't share out here on Periscope but if you want to be a part of that, and this is for my ladies only, let me put that caveat there. It is for my ladies, right? And so sisters that are on the other side of this broadcast, share this out if you haven't done so already and sign up, click the link and sign up for this masterclass, December 17th, 7 o'clock p.m. If there's any part of your heart that's hungry, and if you've been wounded, betrayed, if you've been through some significant transitions and brokenness in 2020, then your heart has been affected. Your heart is hurting. There is residue. Come on. There is regret. And so I'm, I'm like, God, I want to be position my heart in front of your goodness. Position my heart in front of your beauty, God. Let me let go of the re residue and regret that I've had from 2020. God, position my heart in 2021 where I'm serene, where I'm stable, where I'm secure, and my nerves are not all strung out on, ed on the edge from all the hell that I went through in 2020. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So if this sounds like you, if you're feeling this, then click that link. Again, you, you set your own price. You set your own price. You set your own price, right? And you'll have access. And I'll have a recording. It'll be live Q&A and those that sign up, you know, they'll get the link and get the communications on my list and everything. So I highly encourage you, you set your own price, name your own investment and let's go in. Let's, let's get this done. Let's get this done, right? Again, my name is Tanika Maria. I'm all about helping you and helping myself. So when I'm helping you, I'm helping me. When I come out here and teach, I'll be getting it in too, right? Because this helps me to talk. <laughs> It helps me. And so come along with me in the journey. I'm all about helping you and myself get real, be healed, and move forward in emotional wholeness, peace, and clarity. I want to position my heart so that it's not blocked up, so that it's not hard, so that I can receive the mercy and the compassion of God as I continue to heal, as I continue to develop. Thank you for those beautiful hearts, whoever's pumping those hearts. Thank you so much. And I, I want to share these things with you. I want you to position your heart in front of God's mercy, 
for his compassion for us so that every hungry, dry, thirsty place in my heart is full, so that my heart is satisfied, so that my heart is content, so that my heart is stable and all just ugh, all that feelings and all these stories and vain imaginations of what he said and she said. None of that's like all in my head anymore and my heart is free and clear. How many of y'all want that? How many of you want that? Say yes in the chat if that's what you want because that is my heart. That is my heart. If you keep having sad feelings in your chest and you sit down and you get quiet and you start feeling a little sad feeling in your chest, you know what I mean? Mm, no more being an emotional red. No more feeling that pit, feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're nervous and anxious. No more of that little sad. It's like a little sad feeling and it's grief. It's sadness. Come on. That stuff like God heal my heart. Come on. Right? And so if you're in that place, sign up for this. So whatever is in your heart to give, name your own price. Whatever your investment is, that's December 17th, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on Zoom, right? And we want to unpack just strategies, and we're going to talk, and we're going to share, and I'm going to pray, and we're going to do this, right? So let me get off, but I hope this was a blessing to you and those of you that uh, joined late. Go back and catch a little bit of the first one before I got cut off, and then catch the top of the replay of this one. If you have not shared this, do so. If you're not following me, I encourage you to do so. And just blessings to you. My name is Tanika Maria. I'm all about helping you get real, be healed, and move forward in emotional wholeness, peace, and clarity. So blessings to you all. Know that you're loved. Know that God is aware of you. God sees you. God sees you. He don't miss a beat. He is sensitive towards you and he's mindful of exactly where you are. We're the ones that get out of position. We're the ones with all of our vain imaginaries and imaginations and stories and all of our distractions that we can't even hear or perceive that God is even aware of us. We're so caught up and busy and dizzy, like Rodico Roberts says, with our distractions that we can't even discern that God is even aware. And so I encourage you to just get before him, seek him and look to him. So blessings to you all. I'll be back out here again sometime this week. I don't know when, but I'm going to, I have a part two and a part three because I only said a little bit. So I'll be back out here again. So take care you guys and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Can't stop it, you guys.